How you doing, guys? Just give me a moment to get, re get everything situated here. There we go. So, guys, hope everybody's having a great day. Um, what I want to talk about today will... I'm going to put a couple of verses up on the board, and I want to address anyone that is still confused, and I know I'm probably going to have to just keep going over this issue forever on this channel. There's constantly new people coming to this channel. There's constantly people just, they don't know how to rightly divide. They don't, they've never even seen 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. They've never seen this verse, right? And we'll go there today. They've never seen this verse. That verse talks about rightly dividing the word of truth, which is comparing. When, you, when you're dividing the truth, this whole scripture, all of this, all the words in here are true. When you're, when you're rightly dividing, separating the word of truth, how you do that appropriately is you understand throughout this entire scripture there's truth, right? But in order to separate it, in order for, to, for it to be separate, then there is truth in certain areas that are not the same as truth in other areas. For example, God told Noah to build an ark, but he did not tell us to build an ark. I can turn in scripture, I can go to that verse where it talks about God telling Noah to build an ark. And we know today, God did not tell us to build an ark. See, it's true, but it's not true today. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna expound on this and what I'm gonna talk about today. We're gonna to go to John chapter eight, verse 24. And the reason why is I have a viewer on my channel, you might be watching this, bro. Um, you were telling me your comment that you had with someone else and how they tried to use John chapter 8, verse 24 to, to say a person can still die in their sins today. See, this is a person that does not know how to rightly divide the word of truth. They may tell you they know how to divide the word of truth. They might tell you that. But they don't. They don't know how to write it by the word of truth. If they did, they would not be using John chapter 8 verse 24 to solidify their point on anything. Because we know in John, John is speaking to the nation of Israel. You and I are not the nation of Israel. He's not speaking to us. We're Gentiles. There's no Israel today. Now, so many people will take offense with what I said, but there is no Israel today. I do not believe in replacement theology. Israel will come back, but not today. They'll come back in the future once the dispensation of grace has ended. Once the body of Christ has been taken out of here, raptured. Oh, I, I know people hate that word rapture, but you can use called up if you want to. Once the body of Christ is gone, then the nation of Israel will be back on the scene will be back on earth. As of today, there is no nation of Israel. I don't care if you want to even call the actual, the place over in the Middle East and say, well, that is Israel. There's land over there, yeah. But the people over there, they're not Israel. God, he does not have a chosen group of people today. But I don't want to get off on that. So we're going to turn to John, John chapter 8. So that's where we're going to be going next. John Chapter 8, verse 24. <clears throat> we're going to go directly to that verse, and then we're going to go to the beginning of John. John chapter 8, verse 24. <clears throat> I said, therefore, unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So here's another thing I want to put up here. That is what Jesus Christ is saying, right? The cross, the most significant event that happened in all reality, right? You've got before... And after. We all know Christ died at the cross. He shed his blood, died at the cross, was buried, and rose again the third day. That happened there, right? In John chapter 8, verse 24, 
Let's keep reading. Uh, let's go 25. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said, said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spoke to them of the Father. See, I want you people to understand, this is, Jesus Christ hasn't even died at the cross in what we're reading in John 8, verse 24. John 8, verse 24, Christ hasn't even died yet. So you're, when you today, in 2020, are taking this verse, and you're standing on it, and you say, a man will still die in his sins today. You're standing on a verse in which Jesus Christ was talking about before the cross. You realize that, right? Now, some of you just don't care. You don't care about the scripture. You take what you want from it. You don't care about the context. You don't care about any of that. You don't care about who's being spoken to. You just rip a verse out of this context and you stand on and you say, that is what is going on today. It's not. This was before the cross. He hasn't even died at the cross yet. But let's go back to the beginning of John. We're going to go to John chapter 1. <clears throat> Actually, not John chapter 1. We're not going to go there. We actually need to go to another verse. Be one second, guys. We're going to go to Matthew 10, Matthew 10. <clears throat> so I just wanted to show, I thought there was something in John chapter 1 where I was looking for. I just wanted to show in John, chapter, John 8 verse 24, that happened before the cross. I just want you to get that into your mind. Again, we, we, we just put right after and before. John 8 24, you got to understand this happened before the cross. This did not happen after the cross. If you are saying John 8 verse 24 is still applying today after the cross, I don't know what is wrong with you. I don't, I really don't know what's wrong with you up here. I, I don't understand what is mentally wrong with you. But, and that's not me making fun of you. I'm being completely honest. Because if you can't read these verses and you can't see John was be that that verse what we just read, this happened. That was Jesus Christ speaking. This happened before he died on the cross. So at that time, yes, before he died on the cross, if a man were to die, he a man could die in their sins before Christ died on the cross. I'm gonna repeat that again. A man could die in their sins before, before Christ died on the cross for their sins. Do you understand that? We today are living in a time period after, we're living after, we're living after the events of the cross. After, okay? John 8 verse 24 is not going on today. <clears throat> and going back to the comment, the comment was coming from, Apparently, somebody that watches Renee Rowland, I, I have yet to do a rebuke video. I really do need to do one on her. Honestly, I, I do. Because this is the crap that she's teaching. That John verse eight, John chapter 8, verse 24 is still applicable today. See why I talked about those false teachers? You're listening to them. You're, you're just blindly following them, and you're not even looking at Scripture for yourself. Let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Verse 5 through 6. 
Matthew 10, verse 5. So let me put it up on the board because I know I'm all over the place. We're going to Matthew 10, verse 5 through 6. And I hope you follow along in your Bible. I hope you're listening to what I'm saying and not just mad or angry or yelling at the screen or in your feelings. Follow me along with what, what, what I'm writing up here. Matthew 10, 5 through 6. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely ye give. And I just want to, let's, let's read that one more time. We'll go back to the beginning on five. These twelve, Jesus sent forth. These twelve, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. John was one of the 12. He's not talking to you. This is, is important why you need to understand, what am I today? Am I a Gentile? Or am I of the nation of Israel? Now, people are conflicted. People are saying things. They're, they're calling themselves, I am, I am Israel. They have no idea that Israel fell a long time ago. It's going to come back. But it failed. It's on pause right now. Israel's on pause. There's no chosen nation today. None. Zero. And Jesus, back here in Matthew 10, 5 through 6, he told his disciples to not go to the Gentiles. Us. Us today. Everyone alive today is a Gentile. You're either born a Gentile or you're somebody that just deluded yourself and you're calling yourself a Jew. You're practicing Jewish religion, but you were still born a Gentile. None of us are a nation of Israel, but you don't want to hear that. Jesus was not talking to you. John was not sent to you. He was not sent to the Gentiles. Do you understand that? We just read that in Matthew 10, 5 through 6. This, it's undeniable. It's undeniable. You don't believe that? Just click off my video. Unsubscribe. Please go. I don't have time to deal with this foolishness. You just read what Matthew 10, 5 through 6 said. Jesus did not send the 12 to the Gentiles. He told them not to go to the Gentiles. He told them only go to the nation of Israel. This is, and how people can't see this is, is amazing to me. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You're not the house of Israel. You're not the lost sheep. So John verse 8, 24, how you want to say that's still applicable today. That's, John's not even talking to you. He's not even writing to you. So again, John, and all the information, John is writing to who? The nation of Israel. Because Jesus Christ told his 12 to only go to Israel. Only go to the house of Israel. So the whole book of John, who's John writing to? The house of Israel. The house of Israel. But God does not change. He just said right here that, I mean, that's not a change. That's just information going to different people. He just said right here in Matthew 10, 10 5 through 6, don't go to the Gentiles. You can't say God doesn't change and, and, and try to say that everything in the Bible is to me. You're insane. If you're really saying that, you're, you're literally insane. Go to a psychologist, please. Go to a psychiatrist. You just read in the Bible where Jesus Christ himself said, don't go to the Gentiles. That means there's information in your Bible that is not to you. Gentile, it's not to you. Jesus never told you this. There's so many examples. There's so many. You know how many people think that the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is still unforgivable? Who was, who was Jesus speaking to? Who was the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost unforgivable for? It's not the Gentiles. The nation of Israel. If they did that, unforgivable for them. 
For us, it's been forgiven. We're after the cross. Christ has already paid for our sins. He forgave our sins through his blood. He took the payment, which would be death, the death for our sins. We owed the wages of sin is death. He took death for our sins. We owed death. Christ said, I'm going to die for your sins. So he took the death that we were supposed to take. He took that for our sins. And he was buried and rose again the third day. So guys, I know I'm a little passionate like that. Uh, it's just really insane to me how someone can take John verse 8, 24 and insert it into today. I, I really think it's something wrong with you if you're doing that. I don't, I mean, what else are you going to insert? You're going to say we're in Revelation next? You know how many people think we're in Revelation today? No signs, nothing whatsoever, but they say we're in Revelations. One guy I talked to, he said we've been in Revelations for the past 2,000 years. Guys, you got to be able to 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Rightly divide the word of truth. But let's keep on going with this. So we, if you're following along, you can clearly see that John verse 8, or 824 is over here. Okay? It's over here. I even want to put it. In case somebody gets confused. It's over here, people. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 happened here at the cross. He died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. That happened at the cross. Now, 2 Corinthians 5.19 is the state of the world right now. We're going to go there. 2 Corinthians 5.19. So again, we're living in a time period after, after the cross. After the cross... To wit that God was in Christ reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed us the word of reconciliation. So the point is, this happened at the cross. And just so I, there's another verse I can show you. But the point is, that happened at the cross. Since then, this is the, the state of the world right now. We're living in a time period in which God is not imputing anyone's trespasses. He has not been imputing trespasses since the cross. Therefore, John 8 verse 24, to put John 8 24 today and say it is going on right now is literally insane. How can a person die in their sins while at the same time God is not charging sins? This is the statement that insane People are saying, this is the statement that you're saying. That is what you're saying, people. Some of you literally have lost your minds or never had one. And it's, it's okay. I was like that too. Until I saw that I saw what the Bible said. I tell you, I went to Truth Time Radio, and I can see the scripture now. I was able to see, oh wow, I'm not living back here in John 8, verse 24. That that was never to me anyway. And that happened back here. But over here, after the cross, right now, during the dispensation of grace, God is not charging sins. He's not charging sins, 2 Corinthians 5, 19. But some of you are saying, but a person can still die in their sins. 
people, this is why, even to the atheists, most Christians look absolutely insane. You really do. These, this statement is illogical. This is an illogical statement. God is not charging sins today. We just read that in 2 Corinthians 5, 19. But some of you are still saying a person can die in those sins that God's not even charging? It's not even making any sense. Or if you don't believe the gospel, I heard this. If you don't believe the gospel, he's going to recharge those sins to you? Sad, man. And y'all are just gobbling all this stuff up. Dude, you don't care about the scripture. You don't care. Somebody just show you a random verse from John 8, verse 24. You're right, brother. A man will die in their sins today. You're right. You don't even look at nothing else. And don't even get me started on, what about Hebrews? What about Hebrews through Revelation? Do you know how to rightly divide the word of truth? Do you know what dispensations are? You, know, you realize we're not in Hebrews or Revelation. You know that, right? If you, you go learn that and then come back. Go learn that. Go learn what dispensations are. Go actually read 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Understand how to rightly divide the word of truth and come back to my, my channel. You don't understand how to do it, just leave. Because it's not, it's nothing I'm saying right now you're gonna even understand. Because Hebrews do Revelation, we're not there. We're not even in that dispensation. If you're saved, if you're in the body of Christ, you won't be here to go through that. That is a different dispensation, different rules. Yes, in the next dispensation, God will be charging sins in the next dispensation. So what, happen, what happens if a guy from our dispensation misses the catching away, the rapture, gets left behind, goes to the next dispensation? Oh, I got you, Brandon. It talks about that, you know, yeah, there's stuff that they can do, the mark of the beast, all that stuff, but God will be charging sins to them, to those that are in the next dispensation, the new sins that they commit in that dispensation, not any sins they committed here, not any sins they commit today or now, only sins they commit in that next dispensation. God will charge those sins they commit in that next dispensation. If you take the mark of the beast in that next dispensation, yes, you will go to hell. Yes, God will be charging sins in the next dispensation. Now, if you are part of the nation of Israel, you convert over. You become a convert. You believe in God. You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe in the next dispensation. You will become part of the nation of Israel. There is no body of Christ anymore. In that next dispensation, we already left. We will leave sometime, I don't know, the catching away. That's when the body of Christ leaves. Going over into the next, there's no body of Christ anymore. Today there is. Don't get confused. Right now there's a body of Christ. One day very soon, the body of Christ will leave. And then in the next dispensation, is there a body of Christ in Hebrews through Revelation? No. There's only the people that are part of the nation of Israel and the Gentiles. It's going back to that. If you're not part of the nation of Israel, you're going to hell. That's just what it is. You, you're going to you're gonna be saved. You're going to convert over into Israel. You're going to believe that gospel in, in that dispensation. I don't even have time to go there. You'll be saved by that gospel. It's the everlasting gospel in that dispensation, in that time. Don't take the mark of the beast, all those things. But nothing from Romans through Philemon, nothing from Paul will be in that dispensation. This is where you people are confused and you don't understand what is going on because you're not reading. That's why you're confused because you're not reading. So people, you must understand, right now, God is not charging sins. He hasn't been charging sins since the cross. In the next dispensation, yes, God will be charging sins to the people in that dispensation that commit sins in that dispensation. I'm pointing over here to, to give you kind of a, an example. I'm trying to say the, the future, all right? We're in the present now. That's the past. You get what I'm saying? 
Let's give you examples. So the point is, stop saying, stop thinking that God, you, you can die in your sins today. In the past, before the cross, yes, a man could die in their sins. Today, after the cross, a man can die in their sins. Now, when we leave the rapture, the catching away, after that event, after that event, yes, a man can in that time be judged for their sins. They take the mark of the beast. They will go to hell for committing that sin in that time, in that dispensation. We're not there yet. There are no sins today that anyone can be charged for, that anyone can die for. It's impossible. I'm going to finish up and go to Ephesians 1 7. And I think this is going to be it. Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to go there real quick. <clears throat> Ephesians 1 7. This is what happened at the cross. So many people will lie to you and say, no, no, this happens when you believe. No, that is a complete lie. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. That's where we're going right now. Ephesians 1, verse 7. That happened at the cross. Let's read it. In whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The two words there in seven that say in whom is not the body of Christ. Whom is a person? Whom is referring to Jesus Christ? So all you people that want to say in whom means the body of Christ, you're insane. Go, go ahead and go back. Go back to your psychiatrist. Is something wrong with you? No, it's talking about Jesus Christ. In whom? In that person. In Jesus Christ. All right, we have redemption repurchased through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Your sins were for you had forgiveness of your sins through Christ's blood at the cross. You were purchased through Christ's blood at the cross. So we're living in a time period where our sins are forgiven. All sins are forgiven. Everybody, whether they be in the body of Christ or not in the body of Christ, the entire world's sins are forgiven. And it makes sense because when you go to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19, that's why God isn't charging anyone's sins. I mean, I don't understand how hard. And, and just to finish this up, I'm going to give you one more and this is it. One more. This will solidify this. Colossians 1.20, last verse. Colossians 1.20. Now, some people want to say reconciliation did not happen at the cross. Just in case they tell you this, go to Colossians 1.20 and give them that. <clears throat> Colossians 1 verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. All things were reconciled by his blood there at the cross. It's done. You're living in a time period where all sins have been forgiven. Christ paid for all sins. They've, the debt's gone. You don't owe anything. Your debt is zero. Your sin debt, your sin debt, Is zero. So when I tell you to believe 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you're believing that to be saved. You are. But you are not thinking in your mind it's not done. No, you're believing it's all done. It's all done at the cross. So yes, I believe Christ died for my sins, was buried and rose again the third day. It's all over. Yeah, I believe that, God. I believe that. I believe you did that at the cross. I'm not holding on to getting my sins forgiven or any of that. They're forgiven right there at the cross. I'm just believing what he did there. I'm trusting what he did there. That will save you. 
All right, guys. I hope you got that. I hope I explained that in a very detailed manner. If you don't know how to 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, rightly divide the word of truth. What I just said makes no sense to you, and you might as well unsubscribe. Have a great day.